YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles. I'm here with a face you've never seen, but before I introduce this guy or let him introduce himself, however I'm going to do that, I want to tell you why he's here with me. So as you guys know, part of Olympus Reptiles, we own a portion of a reptile shop called Manhattan Reptile World. Well, Manhattan Reptile World's gone under some changes and we have a little bit of a new ownership system. So there's still four owners, but one of them is brand new. So we've had an ownership change. So you'll still see me, camera guy Kurt, and Colin, but you're also going to see Mr. Joe Wood. And Joe Wood is here today to introduce himself to you and also share one of his favorite animals. So Joe, tell us about yourself and what you got. My name is Joe Wood, as he's had three different times. And the reason I'm here is because of what's wrapped around my neck. Okay, I love snakes, especially Burmese. This here is a, a male hypo Burmese. Also, a lot of people refer to it as a yellow um, for obvious reasons. So. 50% 50 will say the yellow, 50% will say the hypo. But these are my favorite snakes. Um, and the real reason I got into it is because I want to spread the word that reptiles are as good or in a lot of cases better than your normal pets. And the people that own the, that own the store, Matt, cameraman, Kurt, and Colin, they're really good people most of the time. That's so nice. Okay. He's paying <laughs> me to say that. Oh, I wasn't supposed to say that, right? No, it's all right, though. Okay. It's all fine. right. But uh, so I'm really looking forward to this because, you know, I've never done videos before. And as I get more comfortable, maybe you'll see the real Joe Wood. But right now, <laughs> you know, I'm a movie star, so I'm trying to act like a movie star. But anyways, um, I'm looking forward to working with y'all. Now, now, Joe, you said something I want to want to touch base on with you really quick. And you said that, in your opinion, reptiles make often better pets than mammals. And how so? I don't well, disagree. Yep. I just want to know what I, you're I thinking. Think that's a good question. Um, first and for, <laughs> foremost, reptiles aren't stupid. Um, I will tell you that this snake wrapped around my neck is as smart as any cat you could ever own. Maybe even smarter. Um, and how do I know that? Because this, this guy knows, he knows voices. He knows when he's getting fed and when he's not getting fed. Um, and he's never, ever bitten anybody. But if you listen, every now and then he's going to start hissing. And the reason he's doing this is because he doesn't like Matt. That shows you <laughs> that they're very intelligent. Okay? He is, he is obviously a smart snake. One thing I do want to point out, because I know some of you guys are going to see it and you're going to bust my balls on it. Had to get one ball joke in. Is if you look, you will see some black marks on this snake. And some people go, oh, what's that from? Oh, you guys feed live this rat bite. That's not what's going on here. So what has happened is when we got this snake before, like to get it in our care and get it all healthy, is it did have a respiratory infection, which was treated with Batril. And anytime you treat a big snake with Batril, uh, what will happen is you'll get this scar tissue from the injection site. So that had to get fixed when we got the snake. We took care of that, but it is going to have that scar tissue from that. Now, a trick on Burmese, and I'm no Burmese expert. Joe, you know more about them. So if I'm wrong, correct me. But something I've learned is uh, they do tend to get respiratory more than a lot of other large snakes. One of the ways you can prevent that is just what Joe's doing right now. And what I mean is get your Burmese out and get it some exercise because when it sets stagnant, it never moves. It only uses the front part of its lungs and the back part just build up moisture. And that moisture sets, turning into an infection. It's just a little breeding ground for that nasty little bacteria. But if you get it out and you get it a workout and you get it breathing some, you lower your chances. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct. And, and the other thing with Burmese is they're people oriented. Uh, you know, a lot of snakes, y you can handle them and they don't bite you or nothing like that. But if his girlfriend wasn't in complete shed right now, she's blue eyed and she gets very hissy when she gets blue eyed. I could show you that you open up her cage and she literally crawls until she can rest her head on a part of your body and she just lays there. Um, so you can't tell me that's not intelligence. Okay. Um, and, and I have a Burmese at home and I have red tails at home that I can literally feed right out of my hand. You know, um, if you, if you do this with a snake, I'm telling you that, that they'll make one of the best pets you'll ever own. They're so easy. I mean, they poop maybe twice, three times a month, depending on how much you feed them. This snake right here, you probably feed twice a month max because you don't want an overweight reptile, just like you don't want an overweight cat or dog. So you, the, the care for them is just, is just as easy as any other pet that you're used to, with the exception of the fact that they do have diseases that the other ones don't have. And as Matt says, there's ways to combat that that doesn't cost a penny. And that's simply love your snake. And also with Burmese, they get a bad rap for being aggressive. But if you work with that Burmese and you handle that Burmese and you interact with it, snakes have basically always say three modes. Uh, and it's pretty true for most snakes. One mode is, I'm hungry and I can eat that. Another mode is, I'm scared of that, it might eat me. And the third mode is, 
um, cool, I'm just going to go explore, chill, and check things out. And so because this Burmese gets handled a lot, because Joe loves this thing, you can see how chill it is. It comes out easy. Just by, just by seeing what, you know, most of your snakes, if you've got 100 snakes, 90 of them are head shy. They will not allow you to touch their head. Where he has actually, on his own, is resting his head on my hand. So that shows the intelligence. And, and the other thing I'd like to say, Matt, is um, I kind of disagree with the temperament of a Burmese because every Burmese I've ever dealt with has always been very docile. I've never met a Burmese. I mean, we got a granite back there um, that we didn't, we, we didn't raise up. We had nothing to do with it. And you can, as long as you stick touch it or touch it with something beside your hand, yep. you can grab it and pick it right up. It won't bite you. Right. Well, say that about, say that about a boa constrictor, a baby boa, or a baby ball python, or especially a baby retic. <laughs> they they, <laughs> they, they will put a hurt on you. It, or a corn snake, you know. And do they all make great pets? Yes. But I would tell you, as Matt said, you're going to need a lot more attention to them to get them in this kind of shape. The only other thing I'd say about Burmese as a caution is they are a larger snake. So do make sure yeah, you have the are. space and the time to dedicate to that animal should you choose to go with a Burmese. If you're not going to be able to, and this is a, I mean, a young adult male, I'd say. Yes, it is. He's still got some growing to do. Males obviously will be smaller than females. But if you get a female Ten Burmese, to 12 feet. Yeah, you're going to have to, female, you're going to be even bigger. Yes, they're going to get up to 17. <laughs> so you just yeah. got to be prepared for that, and not everybody is going to be. So know what you're getting. Uh, all right. Enough on the Burmese, but I want you to tell me about another animal that you found here that you love. No, they're, they're, you know that answer. Well, I know, it's, but they don't. It's the world famous Jughead. If you're ever in Kansas and you really want to meet royalty, you need to stop by our shop and go through our zoo and you can meet Jughead. Jughead is our rhinoceros iguana, and he is a dog in iguana skin. Um, he is absolutely incredible, and I, Matt and I were talking, maybe another video, uh, right now, we just turned the lights off, so we're, we're not going to really bother them. But in another video, I'm going to introduce to Jughead to you all so you can see what a real good rhino looks like. I've never had a rhino. I've never really known anything about him. But when I started coming here like 10 years ago, and the first time I seen one, a baby, it wasn't this one, it was one they were selling, I fell in love with him. And then when they said that I had the opportunity to become a part owner and I saw that rhino, I was all in all in see they do get to see it because you think the camera's on us but he's b-rolling this whole thing good, so tell me about good. one animal too so you've said the burmese you love yeah the rhino iguana which is one of your favorites is scott legs yeah what's an animal that since you become an owner you think you've learned the most about that you now appreciate that before maybe you didn't have as much of an appreciation or knowledge about rattlesnakes Rattles which one in particular any favorites all of them but the the, the um scaleless that you got is is truly amazing I don't, I've never really had a love for rattlesnakes. Truly, I never had a love for anything poisonous. Um, but since working here and working with Matt and, and Kurt, I, I think that rattlesnakes have their place in the pet industry, and that's in zoos like ours. Um, and some place where they're controlled, and you know what I mean? They're not in a household. I don't think they're a household pet. Unless, of course, you got a license and you've been working with them a long time, that's fine. Um, but yeah, rattlesnakes are awesome. Um, they definitely take an experience. Keeper, yeah, so. yeah, I love them. And uh, then there's Willie. Um, hopefully he'll show you Willie. That's an Asian water monitor. Yeah, we walk him around on a cat leash, just to let you know, which blew my mind the first time I say it, saw it. So I guess really, other than my boas, <laughs> you know, I, 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 someday I hope to show you all my, um, his name is Bonnie, and his boyfriend's name is Clyde, by the way, original. No one's ever thought of that before. Um, and what I want to do is bring him and her in because she is more docile than this one. This one is, is very curious right now, as you can see. He's, after he got done resting, now he's trying to get away and go check things out. Whereas Bonnie, she'll wrap around me twice and I can walk around with her all day and she won't move an inch. All right, guys. Good. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I know. I love to talk. <laughs> so do I. So yeah, do go this. ahead. So if you guys ever find yourself in Manhattan, Kansas, make sure to stop by Manhattan Reptile World. Don't mind the vacuum running in the background, but go ahead and check out our zoo. Make sure and say hi to Joe or, or Kurt or Colin, or if you're lucky and you catch me, the like five hours I spend if here If you consider that lucky, I just <laughs> want to interject that. Find me and say hi. Check out the zoo. Have some fun. Check out some of the cool product we have if you're in need of anything. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.